Hey guys, we're the Collinges, and this is our diagnosis story. When our daughter was born, she surprised us with her Down syndrome diagnosis. And at that time, we had no idea what our lives would look like. But we quickly discovered extra needs bring extra joy. Through the good times and the bad. In the adventure and the routine. We're learning to live this life to the fullest. With a little extra. So today we're going to be sharing a little bit of our journey with Down syndrome from Estelle's diagnosis to now. But before we get into it, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, so go ahead and hit that button now. So we had no clue that Estelle had Down syndrome until she was born. So I always knew that I wanted to have more kids, but the journey to get to Estelle was a little complicated. So when I did get pregnant with her and everything was going well, we were all extra excited, like really excited. The kids were stoked and we were super happy. Mm -hmm. What do they say? Big sister. What does Clifford say? Big brother. What does that mean? Why would his say big brother? I don't know. Why Little do you, brother. But it says big brother. Why do you say big brother? Because you're having a baby. Oh, yay! That's the head and that's it. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait. I really hope it's a sister. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> Everything was going great, and then I went into labor with her about two weeks early, which wasn't a big deal. And the labor was very fast, very chaotic because of the doctors, not because of us. The birth was very quick. Uh, she had her very quick. And everything was great until the NICU team was called in. So within 20 minutes of being born, she was rushed away to the NICU. She was having trouble with her oxygen levels and she was pretty blue. I mean, yeah. I couldn't really see her, but... She was really purple. She yeah. was really purple. It was really scary, yeah. Super scary. Things went from being great to being scary really fast. And they decided to take her to the NICU and you got to go with her. Yeah, they asked me to come along, which was a little difficult for me because leaving Jill alone in the room wasn't ideal, but I knew, Jill looked at me, she said, you need to go. I knew that I needed to go be with her, so um, so that's what we did. So the doctor actually told Devin that he suspected that she had Down syndrome while they were in the NICU, and I was back in the delivery room. The doctor had pulled me aside when they had her in the NICU, and he had told me that they were 90% sure that she had Down syndrome. That was, uh, a shock, but at the same time, I kind of suspected it because I had recognized some of the Down syndrome features on her face. So the whole time that Devin was in the NICU, I was still in the delivery room and I had no idea what was going on until he came back to the room and came over and told me that the doctor thought that she had Down syndrome. And that was really hard to hear after being alone in that room with my thoughts just kind of spiraling for an hour. So when I told Jill that the doctor suspected she had Down syndrome, I was immediately overcome by emotion. Um, it was, I hadn't really cried up until that point, and it, that, almost saying that out loud to her opened the floodgates of emotion. I remember thinking, like, really strongly that I had done something wrong and that, like, I failed you. And I, I remember my first thing that I said was, are you disappointed? You know what's funny? I said, are you just because he started crying. Yeah. He said, they think she has Down syndrome. He was crying and it just came like a wave over me. And I just thought, like, are you disappointed? Like in me, like I, I failed to give you a healthy child. Yeah. And you know what the funniest thing is? When the doctor told me that she had Down syndrome, the first question I asked was, is there, is it anything that could have happened during the pregnancy? And he said, absolutely not. And I said, oh, thank God, because I want to make sure I tell my wife it was nothing that she did. And we know now that that's not how Down syndrome happens. Yeah. It's not something that you can do. Um, but at the time, it just was, I think it was that 
just like you saying it and crying, it just, it, I don't know, it, obviously I just felt that way. Yeah, I mean. But it makes sense because, yeah, the whole thing, like usually when we had, we had Ella, we had Clifford, like he just was crying and he was happy. And, yeah. And I think it was probably just all of that emotion got halted in that moment. Yeah. And we were sent into this whole different whirlwind of like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, no idea of what's going on and it wasn't normal and it was just, you can't even think. I mean, yeah. it's really hard to explain. You what that feels like because you're just thrust into this like yeah. emergency you're, you're expecting to celebrate yeah. and and you you can't even that's not even a thought in your head anymore yeah. it's it's like fight or flight you're yeah. just you it's survival at that point but really quickly he said no no i'm yeah. not disappointed and we went into this great conversation that maybe we could share another time. I don't know, that's yeah. kind of a lot for now, but we both talked about how we were okay with the Down syndrome. Absolutely. Really yeah. quickly, it was like, we were, we were fine with the Down syndrome, and so it kind of just got like filed away. Yeah, Down syndrome turned into kind of the mountain we would climb later. Yeah, but the reality is she was in the NICU having oxygen problems. They didn't know what was going on with her at that time, and we didn't have a clear answer that she was going to be okay. I mean, we were terrified, especially after everything we had gone through, after being so excited and having this quick labor and her being there and then her being taken away and we just never expected something to go wrong. And now I, we didn't know, we yeah. didn't know what was going to happen. And our whole focus at that time was really just on her health, just on making sure she was gonna live like i just wanted to get to the nicu i wanted to see her they took her right away and so all i wanted to do was get in there and see her and and is she okay is she gonna be okay mm -hmm. was all we could both think about so estelle was in the nicu for 13 days which now doesn't sound like that long but at the time it felt like forever every single day felt like a week yeah like it just every day felt like it had so much that transpired that it didn't just seem like it was a day. It was like the longest day. Every day was the longest day. Especially in the, the first few days. That first day that we were there was probably the scariest because mm -hmm. nobody was actually able to tell us what was wrong. And it wasn't until, what, two or three days later that they figured out what was going on yeah. and they were able to treat it. I remember it was like the third day at rounds in the morning when doctor was giving us an update and I asked some sort of question. I don't remember what the question was that I asked and he looked to me and he was like, well, she's going to be okay. We just can't say when. Yeah. And it, that was my moment yeah. that I felt like I was going to like break down crying and you weren't there the or you might've been with week. the kids. I don't remember why yeah. you weren't there, but you weren't there at those rounds. And so I was like alone and I just, I felt, and I probably should have, but I was just, I held it back. That was the moment in which I felt like I was gonna just like break down and it was, it all just like, w like crashed over me and everything that I had been feeling kind of like boiled to the surface. Like that's what I had been afraid of the whole time. Yeah. I was like, is she gonna be okay? Yeah. I didn't actually ask that question because I was too afraid to. Yeah. I was so afraid to ask the question like, well, is she gonna be okay? Because I, we didn't know. We didn't know. They would, they were very good at like downplaying things. Yeah, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of, Which doesn't, oh, she's fine, she's fine, yeah. she's fine. Which doesn't work for me. No. I'm like, tell me straight up. Yeah. I'm not good at the like, it's fine, it's fine, but like, clearly it's not fine. Yeah. Like, the house is on fire. Like, yeah. It's not fine. <laughs> so prior to this, we had had Ella and Clifford. I mean, they were perfect. You have the baby, they give you the baby, and yeah. just you get to be in like heavenly bliss with your new newborn, and the whole family gets to come in. And that's what we were expecting. Mm -hmm. That's why I bought the little matching shirts and we had a whole plan for how this was gonna play out and this was not our plan. But after 13 days, she miraculously got better. I think she took this crazy turn around. Yeah. She, so she came home on a Saturday and it was Thursday. It was Thursday that they had told me it could be another two weeks. And by that night, like she was just, totally better yeah. not not a hundred percent but she was like so much better to where then the next day they took her off oxygen yeah i walked in on friday morning to see her without the oxygen for the first time and i was like whoa what happened and the nurse was like well don't don't get too excited we're just gonna try it out like this might not be permanent we just took it off but she's been doing so well that we're gonna just, <laughs> we're gonna see and she just like from that point on it was like she's going home yeah and we were just 
like... Oh, we were ecstatic. I can't even explain it. Yeah, it's, it's the weirdest feeling. It was two weeks of waiting for that moment. Yeah, and difficult weeks because we had Ella and Clifford at home. Yeah. And so we were going from home to the NICU and we were trying to explain to them why their baby sister was at home and trying to make sense of what's going on over there. They were expecting to come in and meet her and yeah. they and couldn't they could, go in there. They could come and visit and look at her through a window. Yeah. And it, was, it was just soul crushing to watch these poor little babies looking in the window at their little sister. That was not knowing what was going on. I mean, we didn't know what was going on and, yeah. and they sure didn't know. It was very scary for all of us. Yeah. So when we finally got to bring her home and the kids finally got to meet her and hold her, it was just, it was everything. It was literally, her. Ready? they were so in Here love. She comes. You can kiss her on the head. We were just so, like, everything just melted away. It was like, such the whole, a relief. The whole two weeks was just, like, it was just gone. It, it was like a memory. Yeah, it felt like it was years ago. Yeah. The first couple days we spent at home, like, we couldn't even remember being in the NICU. It was, it was just, yeah. it was very blissful. She was such a dream baby, too. Yeah, like, she was. She was such she was. a good baby. Yeah, so immediately the hospital had connected us with our regional center, which words I didn't even know at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time Estelle was three weeks old, we had her first intake and they came to our house and we sat down and we chatted about services and we set up assessments for her to start with PT and OT. And I just was like, how are they gonna do PT on a baby? Yeah. Like I had no idea. It was a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> But, but we got connected with these groups and services right away. And um, what we quickly discovered though, was that there was no like support groups in our area. There was not really a community mm -hmm. of uh, people with Down syndrome in our area. Yeah, in fact, anyway. the, yeah, the, the regional center pamphlet had like pages and pages of like these parent support groups and there was none for Down syndrome. None. None, yeah. we were like, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah. So because of that, we immediately sought out community. Yes, we did. And in fact, when we were in the hospital, we had um, taken to Instagram mm -hmm. and different platforms like that, uh, searching Down syndrome and searching kids with Down syndrome. And, and just that little glimpse during that time gave us a lot of hope and, yeah. and allowed, because in that time, like we had said, the, the mountain was waiting for us to kind of start to climb. And that really turned that mountain into a molehill. It it made it, it helped us to come to the conclusion that you know what Down syndrome is not. It's not a scary diagnosis. Yeah. It's yeah. not something to be afraid of. I think the Instagram connection is so strong because that's where when the words Down syndrome would creep in, like during those first couple weeks when everything I wasn't sleeping and everything was just terrible. There would be a lot of nights when I would just I wouldn't be sleeping. So three in the morning, I would just start to wonder, what does Down syndrome look like? Like what are what does that mean for our lives? And I would start to get anxious about that. And I would go to Instagram and I would just like hashtag Down syndrome, and mm -hmm. I would see all these pictures of these kids that were just happy and their families were happy. Oh and, yeah, beautiful pictures. And it, that would be so hopeful and so assuring to me. It's like it's okay, it's okay. And that's what we quickly discovered too. We very quickly, once we got Estelle home, we very quickly realized that Down syndrome was not a big deal. She was fine. When we got home and she was off all of the tubes and everything and her oxygen was fine, she was good. Like she was She fine. was a normal little baby. She was a totally normal baby. Like everything <laughs> was great. We actually, I had a friend when we saw them in public and I had her in the little carrier and I introduced him to her and we told him that she had Down syndrome and he said, are you sure? <laughs> a lot of people would say that at the beginning. Yeah. It was really interesting. Because she just looked like a baby. Yeah, she was she, just a little baby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that was just kind of, that was a trip. Yeah. We, I mean, like we didn't tell our kids at first and they, so they didn't know. They just 
That was just their she sister. She was just a baby to them. Yeah, they yeah. didn't. Yeah, they really didn't know. So during the first week of being home, that happened to coincide with, I believe it was the second season I'm of sure, Born yeah. This Way had come out. Mm-hmm. A show um, about uh, young adults with Down syndrome came on the sh- came on the TV, and we decided we were going to use that as a tool to let our kids know that uh, their sister has Down syndrome. Yeah. That, we started reading some books <laughs> yes. that I had bought, and then we started watching the show, and then it was very like nonchalant one night, we were watching it, and we were kind of talking about Down Syndrome, and we're like, oh, well, Estelle has that. Yeah. It was very, it, just like, I don't know what works. <laughs> Telling your kids is a hard thing, it's and I, hard. I did a lot of research, and it really just, for me, it came down to the point where like we just wanted to be the ones to tell them. Yes. I just didn't want them to hear it from someone else and think we like lied to them yeah. or kept something from yeah. them. But at the same time, I didn't want to make it like a big deal. Yeah. Like it was scary. So it became that. We would watch the show every night and then one night whatever was said, it just felt right to say, Oh, that's what a cell has. Yeah. And it it was a very organic thing. Yeah. It happened very naturally and it was very easy and they took to it very easily. Yeah. You know, I think the show helped them to expose them to people to, with Down syndrome, to show them that their lives were were very normal. Yeah. yeah. Clifford was five, and I don't think he cared at all. Yeah, he didn't he care at all. He just was like, okay. Ella was eight, and her only negative reaction was that she was afraid people would bully her. Yeah. She said, I don't want people to bully her. And that's still something that she talks about to this day. And so, and I get that. And so yeah. we just told her, you know, like, we're gonna, we're gonna protect her, and will tell, show people that she's not different and then hopefully she won't get bullied. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It really became uh, a purpose for us. Starting a, a channel and vlogging mm-hmm. and, and... Yeah, we really started to share our journey a lot more at that time. At that time. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. both have talked about um, doing things like social media and vlogging and we really feel strongly that we want to have a purpose in doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and this really became our purpose, um, you know? Yeah, it kind of turned into this like family advocacy, Yeah, really. It's been important for our kids to not only learn all that we can share with them about Down syndrome, but then they in turn can be advocates themselves. And we've, we've done certain things as a family, like we went to our city and this last October, and they recognized Down Syndrome Awareness Month for yeah. the first time ever in our city's history, yeah. which was pretty cool. So as a family, we got to sit and sit in on the um, city council meeting and talk about Estelle, and it was really cool. Yeah. So we try to do things like that to go to events and to sh- teach them about Down Syndrome and then also show them the importance of advocacy. And that's been a really big, cool thing for our family. Mm-hmm. We started focusing our vlog a lot more on like down syndrome yes. and just like our journey there yeah uh, we started our instagram i had an instagram before but i started a public instagram where we like specifically were like sharing things about down syndrome and reaching out to people so after we realized we didn't have any community in our area we started to reach out to people um and we started to connect with people in all over California, uh, Jill started getting connected with people all over the country, and, and now even all over the world. And yeah, yeah. Now. and seeking out resources and community, we started connecting to like organizations that had these events. Mm-hmm. And so we would go to like these conferences, or uh, the Great Wolf Lodge had a meetup, which was super yeah, the fun. Dance party, down to dance parties, <laughs> buddy walks, yeah. um, just all kinds of anything that was within distance that we two could, three hours drive yeah we were down if it fit in our schedule and we could yeah. go and we really became like addicted to the, the community to the community and it turned into an adventure yeah we really it for not only for us but for our kids too it just turned into this great adventure of just like yeah connecting with community it was really cool totally cool and so it really did show us that a lot of the things that we had thought back in the early days when we didn't really know much like when we thought our kids are gonna suffer for this. Yeah. Like our life is, I genuinely thought for a second, our life is gonna be the hospital. Yeah. Like our whole life is gonna be the hospital. Our kids are gonna suffer because we're not gonna be there to take care of them. They're gonna have to grow up fast. They're gonna have to sacrifice because of Down syndrome. And Devin and I are like, 
done, like not <laughs> divorce done, but like our relationship, I just felt we're never going to go on a date again. Yeah. We're never going to be empty nesters. Like yeah. we're never going to be able to travel or do anything. There was a time when I thought these things because I just didn't know. And so coming full circle very quickly mind you it did not take long for us to realize that all of that was nonsense and that actually our life was more full of adventure yeah we were doing more things together we still haven't quite got on date nights no (laughs) not yet (laughs) but i would say our relationship is stronger absolutely it is absolutely it's stronger it's so funny how completely the opposite our lives actually are now compared to those first thoughts yeah i mean we wouldn't we wouldn't have had the adventures that we've had Mm -hmm. if it weren't for her if it weren't for down syndrome um and that's such a weird thing to think about because at the at the beginning like jill said we had we thought that we were never going to have adventures like that and and because of her we've had even more so it's really been like this journey that we're just learning as we go. Like we, we're not experts, but we're taking it as we go and we're learning along the way. And we've got the best little teacher. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, she's gone. Um, I feel that she works so hard for everything and with a very positive attitude. Like she is just determined not to say that she never like doesn't want to do something she can be very stubborn when it comes to like all of her stages of development we've had to work really hard extra hard yeah and she just keeps going she falls and she gets up and she falls and she gets up she never stops trying no she doesn't she's got an unbreakable spirit yeah like i look at estelle she inspires me and she's just she is who she is and she's amazing and she's determined and she's like every good thing that i try to be in my life people with down syndrome have freedom to like the next level yeah and it, it's contagious it's contagious it's so contagious we, you're just like i want to be like you yeah someone with down syndrome is like the human that we want to be it's so How do you true. say that no that's so true <clears throat> that is so true yeah estelle we look at estelle and her her ability to um just be so grateful for mm-hmm. the smallest things yeah, and really it's it is just unhindered humanity yeah yeah that's a good way of putting it for sure one of the biggest things that i think has come out of this was this breakdown of these preconceived limitations on yeah. somebody with down syndrome i think our perception changes just not only in how we see estelle but on how we see our other kids on how we see other people I think how our relationship works, there's just been such a shift there and that's been the greatest blessing that's come out of mm-hmm. all of this. And like we're still learning and we're still growing, but it's amazing there has just been yeah, like the greatest gift. And if I could go back and tell myself that day, like your daughter has Down syndrome, I would be like, awesome, <laughs> like yeah, for real. Like, we're stoked. So stoked. Yeah. What Estelle has shown us and what ev- our whole Down syndrome community has shown us is that Uh, we really put limitations on ourselves Mm -hmm. and they show us that those limitations are only in our minds. Yeah, that's so true. It's like inspiring to tear down the own personal limitations that we have within ourselves and realize like that's, we're creating those because if this little three-year-old can work so hard on these limitations that the world is putting on her to like overcome them, then like what am I doing with my life? Yeah, I know. Tell her that she can't do something and she'll prove you wrong. Yeah, don't even, yeah, just, <laughs> she is something. Our message is really that has become that now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a personal journey for us to break down our limitations mm-hmm. and also show the world that the limitations they're putting on people, not only people with Down syndrome, but people of all all abilities, those limitations are only in our minds. Yeah, and they have no place mm-hmm. in our society. We're learning to live like this abundant life through this journey like never before. Like never before. Like never before. So that's our story of Estelle and kind of our journey from diagnosis to now. We have a billion hours that we could share. Yeah. We could sit here. I was just going to say that. Yeah. We We could could sit here and chat for hours about our diagnosis story and our journey and there's, you know, so 
reach out, ask us questions, send yeah. us a message. And if you have any questions or if you want to know more, if you'd like to see another video that goes like more in depth on certain things. Yeah, just if there's a specific know. topic you want us yeah. to cover, uh, we'd love to. We would love to. We have plenty to say. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining us in this video. Uh, we'd love for you to share it. Yeah. That's a, a, a that's in our hearts is to get our message out. If there's somebody that this this can reach through you, we would love for it to reach them. But especially like a new mom getting a diagnosis, yeah. that that's really important to us. That we can be that hope for someone like they were for us. Yes, for someone to see our family and say it's going to be okay. Yeah. So if you like this video, please let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Also subscribe and please share our video to help us spread this message that Down syndrome is not scary. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys.